Before Young M.A. would blow up in the summer of 2016 with her track, Ooh. Before Young M.A.'s other tracks and videos including Eat, Thought, Quiet Storm, Summer Story, and Body Bag would clock in millions of streams and views on YouTube. Young M.A. would make her pitch to be on the 2016 cover of XXL, but would be overlooked. Before Young M.A. would fire back at BET after they decided to chop up her cypher. Oh, they cut mad on my cypher. One of the top Google searches following her name was, is she a guy or a girl? And I can tell you very much, she is a girl who loves women. Even though at times she does look a little like Kevin Gates. Terms with her own recalling that even in the first grade, she would opt to play tackle football with the boys rather than dress up in pretty dresses and be a cheerleader. Her father was locked away when she was only one and she lost her brother in a murder in her teens. She worked her ass off in retail and restaurants while trying to get her own music career off the ground and lost faith for a while when an early manager said she would need to be wearing dresses to be marketable. It was her freestyles over Nicki Minaj's Shy Rack that took her from a local up and coming to a nationally known star and on a rise to fame, she has met with Nicki Minaj, opened up for Beyonce, and even impressed many of the men in a male driven industry. Hey, what's going on black people? Apparently I was the reason that the rapper Young M.A. went viral and now she's one of the biggest uh, rappers in the industry. What's going on guys? My name is Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of Young M.A. prior to fame. Here for you all before they're famous. I want to thank SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. You guys have been long requesting this one and it took me some time because I wanted to get it all right. Be sure to let me know as always in the comments down below who you want me to document next. Young M.A. was born Katora Casanova Marrero on April 3rd, 1992 in East New York, a neighborhood located in the Brooklyn borough of New York City. She is of Puerto Rican and Jamaican descent, and when she was just a year old, her dad was sent to prison and wasn't released until she was 11. Due to his incarceration, she was raised by her single mother and uncles and grew up with an older brother three years her senior. Katora or Kat as she went by, her mother didn't want her to attend New York City's public schools, so when she was seven, she moved to Virginia. She now reacts pretty Proudly looking back on early signs that she had different interests than most young girls. Now come on, what straight girl you know play football? She played on the football team, the basketball team, the baseball, and the kickball team. She also developed a love for wearing Jordans, which is a fashion statement she still prides herself on today. It took her a long time to come out of the closet. Her mother always knew and would ask her daughter what she was into. Music was always really important to her with her mom and uncles big into hip hop and reggae, and they would even perform their own music at an amateur level. Young Kat took an interest in making music of her own, getting a karaoke machine for Christmas, and built her own studio in her bedroom around the age of nine. She would perform a few times at open mics, random events, and at family reunions. A game changing moment for her in music was when 50 Cent released his album Get Rich or Die Trying, which was in 2003. Specifically, the track Many Men, which inspired her to take rapping serious. Great track, great video. Not so great of a movie. When she was 16 years old, she moved back to New York and earned for herself the nickname Young Mom on the streets. After high school, she worked at TJ Maxx and at the New York City restaurant chain Shake Shack, which is also fantastic. She was getting to a point in her life where she didn't want to do music anymore after an early manager squashed her hopes and dreams, telling her she wouldn't be marketable if she didn't rap in wigs and dresses like Nicki Minaj. Then on September 26, 2009, her brother was murdered at the age of 20, and this had a profound effect on her unmanageable. Many levels. Her brother is said to have been affiliated with the Bloods. Following this, she went through months and months of depression while completing her senior year of high school. She kept to herself, she skipped out on prom, and pined for her best friend and older brother. Young M.A. knew that music was her one shot to change her direction in life from a future of grinding it out on the streets. So she buckled down on her music with the goal in mind to build a better life for herself, her family, and her team. She also had to come to terms with her own sexuality, telling Vogue magazine that she held in being sexually attracted to women for so long that once she got it out of her, the music became easy. Now I'm not entirely sure exactly at what age this happened, but once it did, she certainly enjoyed it. In 2012, she briefly took a shot at starting up her own YouTube channel when she began discussing her ideals and lifestyles as a lesbian, but shortly after, she abandoned the project. Once she had become true to herself, she was finally beginning to find her path and was picking up some traction. She became someone for young women to look up to from all different walks of life, and her social media accounts began to pick 
make up a following. She also decided to change her name from Young Mom to Young M.A. Teen that she really got her music career going and in 2014, it was her remix of Nicki Minaj's Shy Rack, but the Brooklyn version, that went viral. That's kind of how it happened. Actually, author Dr. Boyce Watkins, he chimed in with a video post referring to Young M.A.'s remix that she was encouraging violent negative genocidal energy into the community that may get her killed and is killing her own people. He also added, Like she's so talented, but th these verses are, are not, um, they're very creative. They're br it was actually brilliant. She dropped the MA The Mixtape in 2015 and followed it up with Sleepwalking. Her music was spreading, her fans were growing, and she fostered a strong online following. It was during a boozy recording session where she mixed up Ooh and immediately knew she had a hit on her hands, which was dropped as a single without permission. Now if you plan on checking out a future performance of Young MA or any other artist or sporting event, I want to introduce you guys to SeatGeek. Boom! This is the world's largest event ticket search engine. What they do is search all the ticket prices available on the web to find you the absolute best seat at the best price. SeatGeek puts out a 1 to 100 score to let you know if you're getting a good deal or a bad one. Green means good and red means no. Now because you guys have helped me along the way and helped me grow this channel by subscribing and watching my vids, well I worked out a deal to get you 20 bucks back. You just gotta use the promo code FAMOUS and there's a link down below. You might as well use it now. As for the rest of the story, well, you know the story because this is before they're famous. My name is Michael McCredden. We do all sorts of celebrity bios. You guys requested this one immensely on my Instagram and my Twitter. So there you go. I finally got it done. But now you gotta let me know who's next in the comments down below or on, you know, Instagram or Twitter. Okay.